back to Body Electric Brooke with me, Brooke, and Mojo, the amazing kitty. Lay down, Mojo. Okay, so today, today's video is about a couple um, interesting things. Well, yeah, I am going to share with you my opinion, it's just my opinion, on vegans and non-vegans dating. Um, and it's only reference to me. I'm not judging anybody who, vegans who date non-vegans and whatnot. I'm just going to share with you my argument and my opinion on whether or not I would ever date a non-vegan, being a vegan. So that's it. Okay, so me. I'm a vegan. Would I ever date a non-vegan? The answer is, it depends. <laughs> Ideally, no. Ideally, I would love to find a vegan with the same morals as me, who is vegan for the same reasons and reasons as me, and we could just eat the same food, um, eat together rather than two separate meals. That would be ideal. And that's kind of what I am manifesting out there for my next relationship. However, if I do meet somebody who's absolutely amazing and they fall under all my my ideals and my expectations, except for the vegan veganish veganism part, and and they are curious about veganism and willing to give it a try, then I'll be willing to give them a try too. <laughs> so, my last relationship, um, he was we date we were together for three years, and he wasn't a vegetarian or vegan when I met him. Um, I think about a month after he did become vegan or not vegan sorry vegetarian and it was just like that and that was really impressive and that was awesome um, he did continue to eat cheese and eggs which I guess in the beginning I wasn't too too grossed out by that but after a while it was kind of like eh, this is so gross why are you still eating this this is like so bad for you but that didn't that didn't like turn me off from him or make me, you know, bitter or resentful towards him. That being said, um, my next relationship, I'm a single girl now, my next relationship, I think I am going to shoot for the stars and I want to ideally date a vegan. And I'll tell you why. Okay, so the reason why I feel so strongly about this is, first of all, I am vegan not primarily for my health and, the, you know, to look good and feel good. That is definitely on the top of the list, but the very top of the list of why I'm vegan is for the animals, and that's why I went vegan in the first place. It was for the animals. I didn't even really think about the health consequences because I still thought that eating meat was okay. Um, I just chose not to eat them, eat it because of the animals. So that being said, I look at it this way. Here are animals, and here are humans. And so, as you can see, I put animals a little bit higher than humans. And please don't get offended by this. I'll tell you why, okay? So, I look at the earth and, and the world and just the environment and the systems that, that keep the, the, you know, the earth in balance. And animals are not fucking that up. Animals are just living their lives eating what they're supposed to eat, and maybe they're carnivorous, but they're intentionally car carnivorous. They were, they're made that. They have fangs and their intestines are small enough to hold acidic meat in there, like lions and tigers and cats and wolves. And humans, on the other hand, are fucking up the systems. And they think that they can fix the systems by killing off this and cutting down that and planting this here, planting that there. And they're just, they're screwing the whole thing up. They're, we're all just, humans are putting the world, we're going to extinct, extinguish the whole world. We're going to go extinct because of us humans. Um, so that's not saying that I hate humans. I don't hate humans. I'm just saying I value animals to the same or more. So 
let's just say, and that means all animals, okay? I'm not, I only like kitties and I only like whatever, giraffes. I like them all. To me, they're all on the same, on the same plane. Um, so that being said, let's, I was trying to think of an argument to, to demonstrate why it would be hard to date a non-vegan. And this is the best way I could think of it. Okay, so most people like cats and dogs. Um, they have a preference. So I'm a cat lover, I'm a dog lover, whatever. You, most people love either one. Or maybe even birds. I have a pet bird. Something, a pet. Anything that we have domesticated, most people like one or the other. If they don't, you should probably back away from them because they have issues. If you don't love animals, there's something fucking wrong with you. Anyhow, so the domesticated animals, we all just love and cherish. So let's say this. What if I had this really strong taste for dog meat. Mmm, I love my dog meat. And let's say you really liked me. Okay, you really liked me and you're like, oh, I want to date this girl. And then you found out, oh, she likes dog meat? What would you think? And I liked it so much that like, I would go and, I, actually I wouldn't even hunt it. I would pay somebody to do it for me so that I didn't have to see the truth horrendous murder of it. I'd pay somebody else to do it for me and then it would just come in a little package and I would eat you know pounds of it every day and I would cook it and the smell would permeate the air and I would just eat it in just different ways throwing some sauces on it here. Mmm yum 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 doggy. Um, but that what would you think? Would you think that was fucked up? Would you be like this girl is a freaking sociopathic psycho? Yeah, you'd be thinking something along those lines, like, why is she eating a dog, right? Well, that is how I feel when I see people eating other animals. Because to me, a dog is a cow, is a pig, is a chicken. They're all the same to me. I love them all just as much. Um, and so when I see somebody eating a cow or a chicken or a pig, to me, it's like you're eating an, a pet, my friend. And it's just... I can't, I can't fathom having that idea in my head, like, you're eating my friends, that's morbid, that's disgusting, that's crazy. Um, I've been able, most vegans have been able to, you know, to suppress that reality and to just live with it, but the more you step away and you really look at the way our world works, you just, you see how barbaric we are, like, why are we eating these animals? We don't need to eat them to stay healthy. In fact, they're killing us. They're giving us heart disease and cancer. So why are we eating them? And anyhow, that is why I find it hard to date non-vegans. Because eating is something we do, you know, three times a day, if not more. And if you're constantly eating animals, and not only are you eating my friends, you are consuming, you're you're consuming like toxic stuff into your body. You're not taking care of yourself because it's not good for you. And we all know that by now. There's no denying it. It's like right in front of us. Like if you're denying it, then your head is shoved up your ass and you're not, you're not listening. Um, you got the blinders on and you're like, no, 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 no. Just take them off, wake the fuck up and get real with yourself. <laughs> so sorry I got a, off in a little rant, but that's just how I feel. Okay, so for me, it's like we're in a day and age where the truth can no longer be suppressed. It's out there. It's right in front of you every single day. We know that eating animals is not good for us, the animals, and the environment. So why the fuck are we still eating them? So that's my, that's my argument on why I find it really hard to, to date a non vegan. To date somebody who eats animals, basically. Um, I'm not saying I wouldn't give them a chance, like if they were just amazing people who just didn't even realize how bad it was to eat meat, and they're like, oh my god, you're right, I think I might consider veganism. Obviously, I'd give them a chance. But if not, I, I don't know. I highly doubt it. So yeah, that's my rant for that. Now on to a lighter side, we're going to make some cacao shots. So let's go to the kitchen. Mm -hmm. 
So we're gonna need a half a cup of soaked cashews. They don't have to be soaked. I've soaked them for a couple, uh, 20 minutes. Throw those in there. And two cups of water. Blend. Blend until creamy smooth. Blending until creamy smooth. And that is the cashew milk. We are going to add the rest of the ingredients. So, these are my haphazard. Three tablespoons of cacao, cacao powder. The difference between cacao powder and cocoa is cacao is raw. Same plant though. So three of those. A pinch of cayenne pepper. A pinch of Himalayan pink salt. One tablespoon of agave syrup. Two tablespoons of cacao nibs or beans. These are cacao nibs. They're just little niblets. Okay, so we're gonna need some cacao butter. Cacao butter looks like this. It's just a whole bunch of chunks and we need it melted. And so we are going to turn the stove on to medium and melt it up. And last but not least, we have the melted cacao butter. Throw that in there, and all the ingredients are ready to go. And I almost forgot we're going to need ginger. So this is, um, you know, a thumb, a tablespoon, a thumb size of peeled ginger. Plop it in, and we are ready to go. Cheers, guys! Whee! So here is a raw cacao beverage. It's an elixir aphrodisiac, which means mm, it sparks some sexual energy inside you. Um, yeah, so this is um, made from mostly cacao stuff. You got cacao powder, cacao, raw cacao powder, so it's not cocoa. Cocoa is not raw. So cacao powder, cacao nibs or beans. I use nibs, little chunks of the bean, and then cacao butter. It's this white chunks I showed you in the recipe. And yeah, you blend them up with some cashews, water, and some cacao or cayenne powder, and some salt, a pinch of salt. I also forgot the cardamom. I keep forgetting to pick it up and I don't have any on hand. So you would have to add three pods of those in there, but this tastes amazing without it. Mm. Also some agave nectar in there as well. You can use honey, but I don't recommend it because it's not vegan. <laughs> um, so yeah, cacao is an amazing drink. It's full of antioxidants. It's got 40 times more antioxidants than blueberries. And we all know that berries are really high in antioxidants. It's also high in iron and magnesium and calcium. It's also a mood, a mood lifter upper. So it actually helps with your mood. So bringing, you know, a down depressed mood a little bit elevated, it elevates your mood. And it's also, like I said, an aphrodisiac. We all know what that means, right? <laughs> yeah, it is an amazing drink and I suggest you try it. It's all raw, all vegan, and freaking amazing. So that about wraps it up. Thank you for tuning in and watching it. I hope you stayed all throughout my rant. So you could enjoy the cacao recipe at the end. And I hope you um, try out the recipe. It's super quick, super awesome, and super good for you. It's way better than eating rotten corpse, I promise you. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching. I want you to hit a thumbs up for a like. And subscribe down below. And share this video, okay? That's what I want you to do. And stay tuned for the next one. I don't know what I'm going to talk about in the next video. I might talk about what I eat in a day or I've gotten a request to do something outside and share the outside cold, miserable winter that we have here. I suppose I could think of something creative to do that way. Maybe just a little, little, little clip of that. Um, if not, I'm not sure. 
I'll keep you posted via Instagram what I'm going to do next. And anyhow, have a wonderful week and really consider eating more plants. Please, less animals, more plants. Trust me, the proof is in the pudding. I am 34 years old. I have this, I am the same weight as I, I weighed in high school and I can eat as much as I want. How can you go wrong that way, okay? Just consider that, okay? And thank you, have a wonderful week, bye.